Happy CES, Larry. What a great way to start the year. CES is such fun. There's like 110 to 180,000 uh everyone everybody professionals media professionals uh media personnel uh people buying and selling technology all in Las Vegas looking at the latest crazy devices from Alexa enabled toilets <laughs> to <laughs> to a flying taxi cab to uh, some really cool uh, really cool products that uh, filmmakers and uh, content creators could get tempted to buy. Well, let's take a look at it. What's the news this week? The first one is is that if you swing by the Sharp booth, they are previewing an 8K pocket camera. It kind of looks like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. It's got a micro four-thirds 8K image sensor that Sharp says records 8K at 30 frames per second using the H.265 codec, but they're working on making it 60 frames per second by the time they launch. And it has this huge 5-inch pull-out touchscreen. 8K, James. 8K. What's the image quality like? Many are saying that the consumer-oriented camera won't live up to professional standards due to stuffing so many pixels in a micro four-thirds image sensor. That means the pixels have to be really super tiny, and that's going to invite a lot of image, uh, a lot of image noise and fringing to the party. But, you know, we'll see what they do. It does exist. They had the prototype there. It wasn't turned on or anything. And uh, we'll hear more about it at NAB, according to Sharp. Okay. Sharp is out of the gate with an 8K camera. What's next? This is my favorite product of CES so far. It's called the Elgato Key Light, and it's a desk-mounted LED light panels for content creators. You know, all the the, the big thing these days is either doing live video streaming, uh, doing video blogging, or live broadcasting of let's play gaming videos is really big with the uh, with the millennials and using your computer. And the Elgato Key Light was designed with this type of content creator in mind. Key Light is made out of 80 Osram LED ultra blight LEDs with a nice opaque diffuser built into it into a very thin adjustable light panel. The key light is adjustable to 2500 lumens from 0 to 2500 and has a temp- color temperature range of 2900 to 7000 Kelvin. It's controllable from your desktop, mobile device or Elgato Stream Deck controller and the best feature of all 199 bucks. Well, this sounds a lot like the LumaCube Air lights. Who's the market? The market is for gamers who broadcast these Let's Play videos to their loving audience. And that feels growing by leaps and bounds for online streaming. Right now, what gamers and content creators are doing is is they're using whatever lights that they have, which means they have to pull their desk all the way out to make room for light stands and all this stuff. This thing comes with telescoping light stands that can attach to your desk. And so you don't have to move any furniture or anything like that. Uh, the, the panels are really super thin. Then you can control them from your computer or your mobile device. They're just beautiful. And they cast this really great light to illuminate the content creator, video blogger, gamer, whatever. $199. This is like, could be my favorite product of the show so far. And it could be my best in show. We'll see. Okay. That's the Elgato key light. What's our third story? Well, it wouldn't be CES without displays, displays, and more displays. The big one that's kind of stolen the show at CES this year is LG's rollable 65-inch OLED TV, which comes out of the cabinet much like a projection screen. You just push a button, and it rolls out onto display and so that you can watch television and it's a bonafide tv set this isn't a screen it's a tv set with a tuner speakers the works and lg not only amazed attendees with this roll-up 4k oled tv they also built this tunnel towards their booth with hundreds of them curving in all these crazy directions it's a brand new technology and it's also being used for foldable led smartphones which we also saw at at CES this year. LG is also showing off a ridiculously wide 49-inch ultra-wide monitor with a 32.9 aspect ratio. It's got two built-in 10-watt stereo speakers and supports HDR10. It 
could be great for editors who need screen real estate. But if you don't want to pay probably what's going to be $3,500 for a, for a display, Targus has got this really cool quad video dock, which connects up to four HD video screens through HDMI. And then you connect it to your computer via USB-C. And it also po- supports Thunderbolt 3 display port and works with PCs, Macs, Chromebooks, and Android devices. So with all these displays, what are your thoughts? Post-production requires a ton of screen real estate for color correcting and video editing and, and computer graphics and all that stuff. You need a lot of real estate, and we're getting by with multiple display screens. The ability to create one or buy one that's just really super wide that can handle all of that screen real estate is really going to help because studies show that the more real estate you have, the more productive you are. But the thing I don't like about the uh, the LG 49-inch screen is if it breaks, it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to go out and buy more monitors. Whereas if you have a multi-monitor set up and one monitor goes down, you can just plug in another one. So I kind of like that better. Then there's also one more I want to share with you. NVIDIA has previewed a line of up to 40 different laptops that supports Red's Red Raw codec that can work in 6K display resolution without the need to render or use proxies. These uh, laptops are going to be launched at the end of the month and come with over a hundred different configurations. Well, that's what I've seen so far at CES, Larry. What's uh, going on tonight's show? Tonight, we're looking at live production and distribution from software to hardware solutions, how we can bring our message to an audience live. Well, if our audience has ever considered getting into live streaming on the net, tonight sounds like must-see TV.